for the preparation of the speech, I was writing down a lot of the things that was said. The opening, he simply did a hello, so I noted the hello. Yes. I did make the point of his conclusion. He wanted to rather go do something out in love. But all of these triads that were coming out, I'm writing down the specific words that we're saying so that I'd have the specifics, I'd have specific examples. In particular, and then his eye gesture, I have a really very crude diagram there, but it was so I could recreate it as well here. Now, when I went to go make my three points, I was trying to do several things in order to make this work out as a speech. The three points that I come up with, his best point I had put last. That was the language. I don't know if you can see this very well. <laughs> his second best point, I went for the rapport, where he was doing very well with his eye contact and making the connections. Those were the top two, so that was the order they went. Everything else came in between. The one I wanted to really punch was the contrast, so I made it the last point I made for the contrast. Now the others can come in any order here, and that's usually how I write them, carrot plus, just to make them fit in that way. I fit all six of my points in, my time allowed it, so I found a way to make that fit. Now the opening, I tried to make my opening, this is a speech, so I made the opening fit his opening. Someone to watch over me, in this case, the title. Someone watching over you. And for the conclusion, I typed that to the conclusion, conclusion from his speech, since he wants to do something he loves. And I made both of them humorous. I went specifically for a cheap laugh, in a sense. But that's also specifically because people laughing are more open. They're more open to listening to the things that are being provided. So the laughter was to disarm everybody. And even if you groaned at it, it's perfectly fine. The idea I was aiming for was an op to match what he was doing and to give the feedback I was presenting. Now, when it's time for the contest, the evaluation contest, there are a few things I'll point out for you. The judges are given a guide, and in the guide it tells what they're being asked to look for, but they don't have to follow it. But those particular aspects are the judges being asked to look at the analytical quality, whether the speech was clear or focused, and the evaluation being clear or focused. Recommendations, or these positive, specific, and helpful. They're looking at technique. Were you sympathetic? Were you sensitive? Were you motivational? And the last one, as a summation, were you concise and were you encouraging? So when it comes to giving the evaluation in the contest, these parts are the things you want to be thinking about when you choose the things you want to say and when you put together the structure of how you're going to say it. You have five minutes to prepare after the speech, but you have the entire speech to prepare that the speaker is giving, which is why I'm scribbling stuff all over the place. Since it is a speech, make sure there's an opening, a body, and a conclusion. If you do nothing else, I would say in your body, make three points. Use rule of three. If you can fit more, as long as you can make it sound good, go for it. If you can't fit three, do less. Fit your time constraint. And be sure your examples and suggestions are specific. If you want to say, improve your wording, you say you said these specific words, you probably might want to say these specific words. Give the specifics of what they said and what you're suggesting to improve. Personalize it, make it interesting for yourself and engaging because you want to engage the entire audience because the audience reaction will influence results. And in general, I would say recreate the speech, but there's one exception I'm going to give to you this. If the speech is satirical, don't try to recreate it. Because if you try to make your evaluation a satire, I tried that once. Boy, did I bother. <laughs> because the judges didn't get I was being satirical <laughs> in trying to mimic it. It sounded like I was being mean. Yeah. I was trying to mimic, and unfortunately, it didn't go over well. But I did stand out, and that is what you want to do. You want to find a way to step apart from the other people who are speaking. If you all say the same suggestions, then it's just going to be who looked good up there. Find a way to stand out. Find something in particular that you can make yourself look sound different, or specifically something everyone can catch on and go, I remember that. 
more than anything else. But regardless of whatever you do, as with any contest, make sure what you do is you're happy with what you do. So that when you walk off, you're happy. Because after that, the judges make their decisions, and they've made strange decisions. But if you're happy with what you do, then their decision doesn't matter. In the Toastmasters promise, you promise to provide fellow members with helpful, constructive evaluations. And you promise to help the club maintain the positive, friendly environment necessary for all members to learn and grow. That is why we're getting up and doing these evaluations. That's why our club decided to do this workshop. So please take what you have learned, use it, share it to everybody so that we all have that opportunity to learn and grow. Because in the words of Ralph Smedley himself, while most of us may have entered Toastmasters to learn to make speeches, that benefit is but the beginning of the good which may come to us and the good which we may do for mankind. And